तो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू पार्ट टू ऑफ द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल प्रोटोकॉल एंड आई रिसीव्ड अमेजिंग फीडबैक ईमेल्स इंस्टाग्राम डीएम फ्रॉम अ लॉट ऑफ यू एंड यू लाइक द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल प्रोटोकॉल सो थैंक यू फॉर रीचिंग आउट टू मी एंड ऑल्सो आई वुड लाइक टू अगेन मैंशन दैट मेक श्योर यू सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल सो दैट इट ब्रिंग्स अस मोटिवेशन टू ब्रिंग यू सच अमेजिंग कंटेंट ओके now uh, let's continue with the part 2 and understand what are the additional section in the protocol and what is the role in clinical trials let's begin so as i've said that we have uh, completed the protocol design we have understood what is a protocol and why it is important in clinical trial as well as we are continuing to see what are the protocol components now in this particular section we will see the remaining components along with regulatory consideration and the clinical trial conduct of the protocol so the next section in the protocol that would be important would be the study treatment okay in this particular section there will clearly have a pharmacological treatment it will explain what particular treatment are involved how uh, they will be administered what are the doses what is the dosing schedule as well as the method of administration whether it is intravenous oral intramuscular and what are the medication or treatment that are permitted okay that is the concomitant medication followed by the rescuity medication rescue medication if there is any adverse event or any hypersensitivity so this will clearly be mentioned in the pharmacological treatment it will also have a section which will explain any other intervention that is allowed with the primary uh, protocol treatment what is the name of the uh, intervention okay it will clearly explain what is the frequency of the session that are uh, allowed in this particular protocol what is the adherence level and the intervention level next it will also have a section for uh, the other intervention okay the follow up of a particular group of subject in each group whether it is a treatment group or the placebo group or a comparator group it will clearly explain how this participant would be monitored how the compliance would be calculated as well as who would be responsible to administer uh, this particular intervention and how the training would be given for the study treatment so this is how a study treatment section would be defined in the protocol now the protocol will also have a safety and efficacy assessment section where it will clearly demonstrate what are the safety criteria that is involved in this uh, clinical trial when it comes to efficacy what are the efficacy standard that are being implemented now let's see what is safety assessment section so in this safety assessment section it will clearly explain what is the method and timing for assessing recording and analyze of this analyzing of the safety criteria what are the procedures involved in obtaining various aes essays or any hypersensitivity event for uh, experienced by the study participant how are these uh, reports or events being recorded in the clinical trial and how this particular events would be explained in the form of sosars in the form of safety mailings to other uh, protocol participating sites what is the duration of the follow up for this study participant who ex who experienced these adverse events or hypersensitivity or essay and how they will be monitored so that will everything will be covered in the safety assessment section and it will be clearly mentioned in detail next thing is the assessment of the safety so uh, sorry efficacy so it will clearly explain what is the criteria of efficacy how the protocol will determine the efficacy or effectiveness of the study intervention followed by what would be the method and timing of assessing recording or analyzing this efficacy because the trial might be short or long and it will have different inter uh, intervals which will collect various laboratory samples and that will help the investigators understand whether the investigational product is being useful for the subjects or not and what is the interval how it will be recorded and how the analysis of it shall be done so that will clearly be explained in the assessment of efficacy section in the protocol now next thing would be statistics now you can conduct clinical trial and generate all the data but that particular data has to be structurally arranged structurally collected and a particular statistical analysis method has to be implemented so that that data can clearly explain or clearly show a trend whether a study treatment is effective or not and for this statistical methods are employed 
and which includes a various uh, time and parameters for the interim analysis okay this particular statistics will also show the total number of participants enrolled in various sites across the clinical trial protocol it will help us understand what is the number of participants enrolled at each particular site what is the choice of sampling how many subjects are sampled on uh, the study intervention the placebo the comparator what is the level of statistical significance that is accepted in this trial? What is the criteria for termination of this study? And what are uh, the methods for accounting for missing unused or false data? Because when you conduct clinical trial, there will be uh, some data missing. Not all data is captured. There will be some unused uh, data. There will be some false positive data. So that has to be uh, taken care of whenever you do statistical analysis as well as there will be a clearly uh, defined criteria for selection of the participant for the interim analysis. So how many randomized subject or dose or treated subject would be eligible for statistical analysis? What is the eligibility of this subject? How we are going to evaluate this particular subject data and what is the definition of being evaluable? Okay, so all this criteria would be clearly defined in your statistical analysis plan, which is clearly defined in your protocol. So uh, all uh, interested members who want to participate in uh, the SAS okay clinical SAS so it is nothing but a statistical analysis department of the clinical trial where all the trial data is analyzed okay so statistics are one of the most important criteria when it comes to utilization or processing the clinical trial data so this is how the statistics are handled in clinical trial protocol next thing would be data management so as I've said that the statistical uh, plan would be explained, but how would that particular data be banished? Okay, so there will be a clearly defined data management plan, which will explain how the data is gathered, documented, submitted and verified, how the data is archived in this particular clinical trial. It should, it will also clearly define in the protocol, what is the description of the data management activity? What is the interval of the uh, data cleaning database logs? and how the database uh, or the data management plan would help in ensuring the data integrity and the quality data in this particular clinical trial. So uh, the data management plan uh, explained in the protocol would have a description of the data system or data uh, design and development, what particular system they are going to implement in this clinical trial. It will have a description how the data collection would be done and what would be the methods followed by what is the data entry and editing methods and which particular electronic data capture systems are involved. If you want to know more about EDC, I have made a separate video. So link uh, would be in the description. Again, next it will define what are the procedures of data monitoring, how the query resolution shall be done, how is the data being reported and transferred followed by who will be the recipients of this data, what is the procedures for data, data dissemination and how the final data uh, base management and data log would be conducted. So there will be a dedicated section in the protocol which will clearly define the data management plan and how the data in clinical trial would be handled. Now next in terms of regulatory and ethics it would be the three important parameters which is uh, the data management, the quality control and the ethics. So when it comes to quality control, so it will clearly have a quality assurance plan describing what are the standards or control we are using in this particular trial to execute each step of the clinical trial and what are the documents that will be generated. When it comes to ethics, it will clearly describe which particular spread or disease we are going to focus, what is the genetics or lifestyle uh, that we'll be understanding. Next, it will also help us understand what are the ethical parameters that will be included in the uh, clinical trial and what are the adjustment that would be done in order to maintain the ethics in this particular protocol. Uh, data management obviously data management plan would be there. Next which particular disease data would be collected whether it would be a long time or a short time okay how this particular data would be stored and impacted and how that particular data would be helpful in conducting clinical trial. So this is how the regulatory and the ethical as aspects are being taken care of. So thank you for watching this video. So I have 
that combining part one and part two, you would have understood what are various components of the protocol and how they play an important role in def defining clinical trial and functioning of the clinical trial. So a protocol is nothing but a clear guide, a Bible, which defines each and every aspects of the clinical trial. And now you understand what each and every component work with. So please make sure that you subscribe to our channel. It brings us uh, motivation to bring you such amazing video. Make sure you subscribe, uh, share to other friends so that they can also be aware of this uh, clinical trial protocol and move ahead in their career. And thank you for watching this video.